is trouble on the Nigerian scene, and it is about women's football. As coach of Nigeria's senior women's national team, Randy Waldrum could tender his resignation letter as coach of the Super Falcons. That's um, just three months after the start of the FIFA Women's World Cup, or before the start of the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. This information is coming from former Super Eagles uh, media officer, Colin Udo. He made that post on his Twitter, very fine Twitter handle, the early hours of this morning. So Waldrum has come under serious criticism following Falcons' recent poor performances. The team lost three and finished fourth at the 2022 Women's African Cup of Nations. Of course, um, the team lost their three games in Morocco there and prior to beating Costa Rica at the Revelation Cup in February, the team lost seven straight games back to back. Although there are unconfirmed reports that um, the American, of course, uh, will step down as the coach of the side. This is according to Colin Udo, to, uh, who is, Waldrum is ready to recommend a replacement and will push for his outstanding wages to be paid. He's saying, I'm going to cause any trouble, so I'm ready to resign and then push for someone to replace me in my stead. But um, right now we've got joining us, all the way from Abuja, one who talks women's football, one who is beautiful, Kalista Enajele. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. It's a good thing that women, beautiful women, are talking football. And I'm talking about the two women you see on the screens right now. So it's great that we're talking women's football right now. But not oh, on a very good development from the Super Falcons who are preparing for the FIFA Women's World Cup. This kind of a news coming up at this time, it's a bit worrisome. Is this the kind of news we should be hearing a few months away to the Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand? First of all, happy new month and to you out there. Um, it's great to be here again. And talking about the news of Randy and the fact that he might be resigning, I think it's a great news. I mm. will personally feel and be thrilled if he finally resigned, even one week before the Women's World Cup uh, because of all the poor performance we've seen so far from Randy, losing friendly games uh, to USA, Colombia, Mexico, and the likes. Seven on the run, and when we have incredible player. We have Aziza Oshuala, one of the best players in the world with the Super Falcons, and we are yet to see an improvement when it comes to tactics on the field of play. Uh, look at our business performance at the just, uh, not just concluded, at the concluded WAFCON that took place in Morocco, where we were beaten by Zambia in history. No disrespect to the Zambia team. I don't think um, they will come anywhere close to what the Super Falcons has achieved when it comes to the African women um, tournament. Now you look at the fact we are going to the World Cup where we have Australia on the group, we have Canada on the group, we have Ireland, and now the Super Falcons. We need a coach that is tactically right for the Super Falcons. Wandre has showed that he's not there. He's a college coach. And looking at the fact that Super Falcons is a national team, I, I see no reason whatsoever why he should be our coach in the first place. No disrespect to him, but I don't see a reason why he should be. We have we, we have we have gone down in terms of performance on the field of play. We are not seeing the best. If I'm on the moon, one of our own best players has, uh, has been shy up front in terms of goal. You look at Zizel Shuala has not been our best, though injuries has not favored her when it comes to the Super Falcon. So we, we pray that she'll be fit enough to be at the World Cup. And the Revelations Cup that we just played a few months back uh, before uh, this window, you look at the fact that we're beaten by Colombia. We only managed to win the game against Costa Rica. Apart from that, beaten by Mexico, Japan, USA, back to back. Then you have Colombia. So one Randy has really not proven his capability as a Super Falcons coach because we have incredible talent. And thank God, um, Upper Randose is back to the team. She's very experienced, been to three World Cup for the Super Falcons. So I think we have the best legs. A little bit best uh, for now to move up to uh, out of the group stage at the World Cup. So even if he's fired two weeks before the tournament, I think it will not hinder any progress of this team. I think that we just need a team and we need a coach that knows his job. A coach that will come out outrightly and tell you he doesn't know uh, Ungozi or Kobe. That's the only creative midfielder we have. If you look at Chris, uh, Christy Uchebe, she plays more of a DM. Look at the fact of uh, Regina as well, more of a DM. The only creative midfielder we have, which is Ungozi Okobi. He tells you he really doesn't know Ungozi Okobi before the WAFCON. I really don't know what he's doing. 
and he's been there since 2020, October 5th. That is over two years. So I really think it's time the Super Falcons really get a coach that understands the team. No more of the players. Look at the under 20, under 17, the level at which they played at the World Cup and bring some of these players into the team. The under 17 went to India for the World Cup. Good performance out there. We have some players we can look out for from Ajakaye to Amina Bello. These are players that are played in the under 17. Look at under 20 as well. We need everybody hands on deck to ensure that we don't go to the World Cup and disgrace ourselves. The 2018, 20, the 2019 World Cup was not the best of results, but we need to go out there and see what we can bring out. But for now, I have not been impressed with Roundy. I think he has not done his job as a coach, and I think he should be fired. But I was really thrilled when I saw the news from Collins. I hope this news is true and is not a fool, but I hope it's true and he resigns from his job because I don't think he's the man that should take us to the World Cup in Australia. And your sentiments concerning performance, uh, because a coach is as good as his core card for a national team or whatever team he is uh, managing. But um, the Randy Waldrum, after the seven back-to-back -back losses in a row for the Super Falcons and even losing out on the Women's African Cup of Nations title, he picked up this job without even getting paid the first half. You know for sure, you can attest to, to that, that he was not even paid, but he got on the job, kept doing the job until he had to even voice out. Do you think these rumours about his resignation will not be unfair? Or maybe he has his own right to say, I've not been paid, I'm not coping well, it's not working for me. So I think a resignation for me will be fine. Uh, when it me? comes to the issue of um, payments, with the women's team, I think um, it's quite difficult to talk. There is, is a norm in the federation. We have series of issues like that mm -hmm. in other um, for the other stages of our football with the super egos as well. We have had having issues with coaching um, salaries and what is happening there. I think with Randy, I, I, I know the issue of salary will come in. His wage is not being paid. Is a bad omen. Is something we should not be be attached to it right now in the stage of our football. But it's just there in Nigeria. It just has to do with our federation and how they need to fix, fix this issue. But I think Randy wants to resign because of unpaid wages. I think he's, he should resign. He has a contract. He signed a contract with um, with the federation. So he's obliged to be paid. And if he's not getting paid, I, I don't think he should be there as a coach. Uh, no disrespect to him. But Did in the first place, I look at the issue of getting a foreign coach and an indigenous coach. Okay. Let's be factual. The amount of money Randy is receiving will not pay will not pay our indigenous coach. Don't you think you're money. being so, don't you think Kalisto uh, you're being sentimental by saying if he has not been paid then no, he should resign. You've no. said he should resign in the first place. Yeah if he's not been paid he should resign. But so it's like it has like issues a, way back it's like, like a blessing in disguise. To get in the job. So are you saying it's a blessing in disguise that if he's not been paid yeah. and he wants to re resign then he should resign because it's a blessing for us. Yes, as I said, if he's not getting paid, he should resign. Uh, it's a blessing to us, but it's a bad statement on the federation that you get a, you employ a coach and you don't have to, you don't pay the coach. So it, it doesn't really stay well for us, especially in international scenes, whereby you hear headlines of news that uh, our coach resigned because of unpaid uh, wages. Whereby just a few days ago, you look at the former Saudi Arabia coach just got appointed by the France feminine uh, uh, women's side. So. These are, these, these are not news that we want to see in inter international scenes, but if Randy has not been paid, I think he should be resigned and the federation should step up their game and ensure that we don't have this situation, so that we don't have anything detracting these coaches from doing their job. They should get paid on time. They should get the proper support they need. They should get friendlies arranged for them. And it is something I want to say, but Randy has really enjoyed more friendly games with the Super Falcons. And I think I will have to give him credit for that because he has okay. used his connection okay. being the coach of the Pentons in the USA to ensure he gets these friendly games. Okay, what would you say would be a good replacement for Randy Wardram uh, and this, you know, some coach? Or do you think we should have um, Thomas then? I'll be back. No, I, I really don't think uh, the Navy should come back into the World Cup with the Navy. After this World Cup, I think, truly, honestly speaking, we have absolutely no business having mm. players back into the team. From Onome, she has played and given Nigeria her best. She's going to turn 40 
uh, you have uh, uh, Rita Chukwelu, you have uh, Francisco Dega. They have tried and given their best. I think it's time we open the door and usher in the under 20 players and other players are applying their trade uh, abroad. But now we have to do with a coach that knows these players. The scouting team as well needs to come in. This is where the technical department work hand in hand with the coach. And this is something we've, we've had issues with over the past few years. Now the coach needs to look in depth. And that's one of the issues I had with one uh, Randy. Um, he hardly comes to Nigeria to watch the under 17. He hardly comes to Nigeria to watch the NWFL play and their game. The league is going on. We have Bayesa, Robo Queen. Um, the Robo Queen we are enjoying today is a product of Rashida Tajibade um, or Shuala. So he needs to come back and watch the league, uh, the NWFL league, the women's league, and see where some of these players can come into the Super Falcons. You can't really keep depending on player playing abroad. We really need to look inwardly because mm. these players you see out there abroad are a product of our mm. cadet level okay. and our league. So this is something um, the NFF will really need to look out for when looking out for a new coach that should take over the Super Falcons. Well, I'm hoping that the Nigerian Football Federation will take into consideration all that you have laid down today to get a better Super Falcons going into the 2023 Women's World Cup. Thank you so much, Kalista Enegele. Uh, women's football commentator all the way from Abuja. We do appreciate your time on the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.